So let's just say, for instance, you are going to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. If you go to the ABS, um, you can get hold of things like census data. You can look at industry overviews, which are very useful as well. People and communities are a great way to explore aggregated data about the way that Australians work. And then there's data by region, which is probably the area that I use the most when I'm looking at setting up a shop in another area or another state or another city. I can preview what that state and city is like in terms of the kind of people that are there, the employment factors, the all the, all the information I would need to know when it comes to those particular people and whether they're likely to be a good match for me setting up something. So for instance, if you're looking up to set a, um, a fish and chip shop. Now, younger people don't tend to eat a lot of fish and chips. It's just not a particular thing they go to eat. But a lot of older Australians do, and particularly baby boomers. They love their bakeries for pies and they love their fish and chip shops. So you were looking for an area that either has someone who, uh, a population that is older, generally, or has a lot of older people going through it. So for instance, you'd be looking at somewhere like Mandurah, south of Perth, which is quite um, an older demographic of people. So you'll find that it's a great place to put a fish and chip shop. Or it could be a place like, let's say, Victor Harbour in South Australia, where there are quite a, it's quite an old population of people who live there year round. But you also find that a lot of older people will travel there because they want to, they're doing a lot of road journeys. Um, the the grey nomads go through there in their caravans. So having a bakery or a fish and chip shop is like, you know, catnip to those people. That's what they're after. So getting that kind of information out of the day, Australian Bureau of Statistics as data by region can be really, really good for you. Um, let's take a look inside. I'm actually going to um, stop sharing this particular page and we're going to have a look inside the Australian Bureau of Statistics to see what things we can get out of there, which will be useful for our particular, um, you know, the way that we're looking at doing this. So I'll do another screen share and we'll go over to that page. Let's go to the Australian Bureau of Statistics website that looks a little bit like that. So you've got a whole bunch of general stuff in there. So the average weekly earnings per household is $1,737.10. The unemployment rate is 4.6%. Um, the consumer price index is um, an, a 3% increase in the cost of living um, since the 2021 September quarter. And then the population, 25,739,300. All sounds great but none of that is going to give us a lot that we can work on. There are general things that they release. So you've got some latest releases, a detailed monthly and quarterly labor force data, which could be useful if you're looking at hiring people. There's charts about employment, um, casual employment, occupation and industry, um, right down to, you know, uh, the death rate, payroll jobs up 0.3% the second half of November. Or we can go into stuff that's a little bit more specific to what we're looking for, like the data by region. So I go data by region. We can look at key statistics by the place we're looking for. So at the moment, it's highlighted a few areas, the capitals, first of all. So the Northern Territory, West Australia, Perth, South Australia, uh, New South Wales, Sydney, Greater Sydney, Greater Brisbane, and Greater Melbourne as the three biggest centres. And then we can go down into Tasmania as well. I've just uh, got to go a bit closer so I can actually get there. Let's go. There we go. So we're going to take somewhere in maybe not a capital. Let's go for somewhere like Rockhampton in Queensland. So I'm going to look for that. I'm going to search it. And it's going to tell me if it's got some stuff for Rockhampton. So it's got it, the basics, tells me what the population, estimated population in 2020 is 120,616. So it's, that region has quite a large population, it includes places like Yapoon, not just Rockhampton itself. If I move this uh, data around a little bit, I can see what it's actually going to then start to see. So it's covering quite a large area of the Queensland coast. We can see that the median income for people in that region from 2018 data was 52,654. So we can then compare that with another region. So let's just say, for instance, I'm looking to open up a, a, um, a branch of my business in Rockhampton, but I'm also looking at comparing that with Mackay. So I'll look at comparing with other regions. I can go the other area I'm going to look at is the next area up, which is Mackay. So comparing those two, bring them back in so I can see them. So I've got Mackay selected, 
a Croc Hampton sleeve. They don't really want to select that one. They don't want the Bowen Basin. But this um does move around a lot, this map. It's very handy to have one, but it does move around. Let's just say I want to select all those different areas and they're the ones I want to compare. So in 2020, it will sort of bring out the comparison down the bottom here. So I'm collecting between Mackay, Bowen Basin North, Rockhampton, and Mackay are the two I want. I don't want Bowen Basin North, but it's selected in any way. And it keeps moving around this damn map. <laughs> Sorry. This map is like really, really, really super, um, super sensitive. Come on, here we go. Rockhampton and Mackay. Thank you very much. So as I go down the bottom here, it's looking out selected regions of Rockhampton and Mackay. I can now look at the population. So the population of Rockhampton, 120,000, Mackay, 117,000. What I'm looking for is information in here. If I can make this a little bit bigger for you to be able to read, that'd be helpful. It's going to tell me what I'm looking for. So whether the kind of people I am looking for. So there's in Rockhampton, slightly more women than men, but slightly more men than women in Mackay. So there's no surprises there because it is a very large mining based town. Rockhampton, more so agriculture and beef cattle rather than mining. Now we look at the breakdown of the age groups that people are in. We start to look at it's a fairly even spread across the age groups, but we get a bit of a spike sort of when before we get to um, the older areas. So I think um, between 15 and 19, there's actually quite a big number of younger males in Mackay. We can then split that with women as well. But what I'm looking for is something a bit more, not just the population. I'm looking for things such as, you know, birth rates, death rates. We haven't got any of that information for yet, but we can look at migration. This will tell us a little bit about, you know, how many people are moving to the area and whether there's a population growth I can measure. So we can see that Mackay is growing faster than what Rockhampton is. We can see that though, that the internal migration was much bigger in 2020 in Rockhampton. So Rockhampton grew faster um, in 2020 than what Mackay did, but in general, more people came to Mackay than Rockhampton. The overseas arrivals are a little bit more for Rockhampton than they are for Mackay. So that's telling us then that it might be a faster growing place, Rockhampton than Mackay. So it's something to look at. If I wanted to look at the aboriginality of those regions, I can look at that. It doesn't have a lot of data available in there for me, but it can tell me a little bit more about who are the people and where they come from in that. Now, the census um, information isn't quite available to compare for those two, but it does tell me that all these are supposed to be things that come up, but they're kind of letting loose on those because they don't have a lot of that information. What I may want to look for though, for something that's affecting a business, say for instance, I'm looking at this out of a bakery, to look at the industry and economics of those. So we can see what basically the, the non-employing businesses are. So sole traders, there's a few more of those in Mackay because you've got a lot of contractors. Um, you can look at people, the businesses that employ a few people. So there's very strong similarities between these two markets. We find that the majority seems to be um, sole traders when it comes to business. So sole traders are a lot of tradies. And a lot of tradies like to eat meat pies. So a bakery might be a good idea to open up in either of those places, though the population of Mackay is a little bigger. Now, I would take that data and then compare that to a Google search that says, how many bakeries are there in Mackay or Rockhampton? And then look at where they are and go, wait a minute, this is an industrial area I can see on this map and there's no bakery there. I could make a mozza in that area if only I set myself up in that industrial area where there's no other bakeries. So these are the kinds of bits of information you can take and then combine with other kinds of information to make some good decisions about what to do with your business. We can look at um, you know, the, the business entry. So these are the new businesses that started. So we're finding that Mackay has a, bit, a few more businesses starting than Rockhampton did in 2020. Um, we can see most of them are going to be non-employing. They're going to be sole traders. But if we want to look at actual you know, businesses that got started that have employees, again, Mackay is certainly a long way ahead of Rockhampton. When it comes to bigger businesses, though, we find that though Rockhampton's not that far behind Mackay. And for then those who are called medium-sized businesses with 20 or more employees, there's a few more of those in Mackay than in Rockhampton. So you can see there's a lot of growth there. Um, then we see the businesses that closed down. So you can actually start to tell new businesses starting in Rockhampton was 624, but 681 closed down. So there's actually a net loss of businesses. Now that will tell me that 
there might be a little bit of an economic change happening in that region. The same going for Mackay, 752 started up, but 783 quit. So that's also really interesting news to know that in most of these cases, you had, like, if you, if you added up all those together, you can see that there's more finished than started up. And again, in here, just about the same, not very much difference, but we had slightly more businesses start up in Mackay than finish. So we could say that Mackay might be in a better position than what Rockhampton is. And then you can break down what they're all in. So accommodation and food services, which will be com competitive with our, with our, um, with our bakery, we're 364 in Rockhampton. Look at that, 306 in Mackay. So bigger population in Mackay, bigger um, you know rate of businesses uh, being started in Mackay, but there's less accommodation and food services businesses in Mackay than there is in Rockhampton. Reasons for that? We don't know. There could be any reason down to lack of services in one of those areas or the other. And you can compare that with all the other kinds of industries that, that are there. So you can have a sort of an idea. Now, the other services are probably the, one of the biggest areas um, because simply because it's, you know, if you don't know what your business fits into in these categories, you'll go into the other. So you can look at all this kind of information. We can go back and do those comparisons and we might compare somewhere bigger like Sydney and Melbourne or Brisbane and Adelaide or something like that. Or we can just go back to the home and look at some of the other stuff that's available in there. So we can look at under statistics and look at all sorts of different information in here. So some of these are very big picture economic data that we don't really want to know in this particular area, but we can look at industry overviews in say, for instance, manufacturing industry overview, um, you know, the output of those areas, anything in here that might be some sort of interest to you, you can pull that industry out there. So industry could be agriculture, Building and construction, resale and wholesale trade is very important. If you're looking to start up a retail store, you might want to see what the retail um, climate is like. Is there been a, a growth in retail trade or has there been a contraction? Are we losing a lot of retail trade? And it gives you this kind of information, including supermarket spending, which it might be a really good indicator for you if you're looking to start up something which is selling like food or beverage kind of businesses as well. And then we look at two online sales and what the performance of online sales has been in the last two quarters to see how you may expect that your online sales may be able to perform. If you find that online sales seem to be crashing, it might not be a good time to start that online sales service that you are looking on that Shopify website or whatever you're trying to do to set up a store. You can also then do the census information. So you can find census data. Um, it's got a lot of quick stats in there and community profiles. So if we look at community profiles, we can look at the basics for a place. So let's just say we're going to search for Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. So Alice Springs NT, go. And we're looking for the 2016 because the 2021 data isn't available quite yet. So that's just the suburb of Alice Springs, not for the suburbs around it. So we're just looking at just in the actual like town center of Alice Springs. And will tell us a general community profile in here, which we can download, which will give us, and if we look at the quick stats, it gives us a very, very quick look at a particular area. Now, this could be really handy if you're looking at setting up a physical shop front in one suburb or the next suburb. Um, suburbs are probably a bit better for us to look at in a bigger city, safe such as Perth. So look at Gosnells. So Gosnells in WA. Let's go. So show us Gosnells and we can go, okay, there's 20,000 people there. Um, there's lots of private dwellings in there. The average children per family um, is 1.9. Uh, you know, there's just slightly more women than men in that area. The median age is 35. So we go 35 is probably not, that's getting sort of a little bit older. So that's, that's actually, 35 is quite a young demographic for Australia. So we go, okay, well, that's Gosnells. I want to compare that, the median age of 35 with, let's just say, um, uh, Chimera, I think is the name of the suburb. Chimera, no. Uh, Jundalup. Yeah, probably not a lot of people live in Joondalup itself because it's a bit more of a, um, a uh, suburb full of services. But the median age is slightly younger at 34. So there's a lot less people, about half the amount of people live in Joondalup than you live in Gosnells, but they are slightly younger at 34. Now I might want to go, okay, well, an actual suburb that probably makes a lot more sense is Currambine, so which is right next to it. So Currambine, because it's not then a, a city centre like Joondalup is. Currambine, sorry. 
if I can type this correctly. There we go, carbine. So we can see then there's 6,912 and the median age is 36, so slightly older there. So I can go through the other areas like Iluka, for instance, and start to see the differences from one suburb to the next. So the, the median age in Iluka in New South Wales is actually 62 years old because it's a retirement area with a lot of retirement homes in it. So you can start to see which areas may be suitable for things like bakeries and fish and chip shops Somewhere like Iluka would be amazing for that simply because it's somewhere where a lot of older people tend to be. So those older people would tend to like those kind of traditional foods.